Alright guys, Hatchko Amity here today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Big drama emerging last night as Drazat decided to call out many of the Warzone players that took home a fair bit of money at the World Series of Warzone Championships just a couple of days ago. Shifty especially says that he would be taking a senior offer if it was for a lot of money, but Drazat reckons that none of these players are really of the calibre to actually compete. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. Just a quick correction because I think I said in yesterday's video that Skullface and Sage were teammates. The reality was that Sage was on Biffle's team, Skullface was on her Soka's team that came seconds, but you know, the outcome was basically the same. Sage decided to gift the win in the Gulag to Skullface because he thought that he was going to go on to win the tournament, which is exactly what he went on to do. So, um, yeah, still kind of controversial. And there was actually some questions being raised by Denzer and others to say, look, where's your mindset at, bro? Like, come on, 100k on the line, 100k for the win at zero for anybody else, and um, you'll give it a free dub to your boy? Fair enough. But but it did mean that Skullface won a fair bit of cash on the weekend. There was also a mistake, I think, on the graphic that they came out with in terms of the prize pool because um, I was somewhat surprised that second and third place seemed to not get that much money, but actually the prize pool looked like this, I believe. So there was a lot more for second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. than it seemed on the original graphic. So just a couple of corrections there, but I think this makes more sense, actually, than 100k for the winning trio and then like 21k between the next three guys, but um, yeah, Skullface did rather well on the day, all things considered. Now, this is where things started to get interesting, right? Because a lot of these guys that do well in the Warzone side wonder whether they could do well in the CDL. Now, you gotta say, a lot of the content creators in Warzone, the people they play against are usually just, you know, randoms in public matches, right? I mean, you or I, who might go into a Warzone game and get slammed by an actual decent creator. It's kind of rare, except from occasions like this, where they actually play against other pros in a lobby. And in fairness, a lot of the former CDL pros, especially Tommy and Rated, very quickly went from being retired CDL players to, um, you know, immediately right to the top of the Warzone game. Now, Shifty, Biffle and Sage, that was the trio that won the trios, and Biffle has has said that he's kind of all in on going, you know, continuing the Warzone dynasty with Shifty and Sage, prefers streaming, and frankly makes more money streaming than he would have from a CDL offer. Shifty, on the other hand, though, has given some interesting perspective, especially because he was the guy that people thought might be cheating. Now, clearly that's not the case after the victory they had here, but, um, you know, when they played in some of the CDL Warzone crossover tournaments a couple of weeks ago, he wasn't always having the best time in some of the CDL modes, which is expected, right? I don't expect a player that hasn't grinded out those map mode combinations all year to be as good. You know, they could obviously shoot straight to some degree, but is there still a skill gap? I think there probably is. So this was asked by um, GG Recon, Jack at GG Recon, after the um, tournament concluded. And he says, Warzone is a challenge and I like that, but something about the CDL entices me. I like the hard work, being able to start from the bottom again, work my way up, especially the lands, feeding off the energy. Energy. Everyone saw this. I was hyped the whole day when you hear the crowd cheer and you can feel the ground rumbling. That's what gets me. It's a different feeling you can't get from home. So if that's right, if the paper says something that makes my eyes pop up, then maybe. So um, I think this part is quite funny, right? Saying that's like, if the number on the paper, the number on the contract is pretty big, then he'll consider it. Like he's, you know, like Hex is giving him the call to be like, Shifty, we need you to save the green wall here. We'll give you whatever money you want. Like um, if he's going to get an offer from the CDL, it's going to be from teams that are paying the minimum. That's just how it is. And this is the reason why I'm going to give Biffle whatever offer you want. I don't think he's really going to give up the Warzone thing because it probably just doesn't make any sense to do so. But still... Shifty's like, look, I'll come and play in the CDL if you give me enough money, and obviously he feels like he's good enough to do exactly that. And this is when people raised some questions about this, and um, you know, many of the pro players, Draza, Scrappy, and others chimed in with their perspective on how these guys might fare if they were actually to come into the league. And also to consider, right, that um, I said yesterday, if I'm the GM of a team like Gorillas. I might give Biffle a go and just see, you know, do you want to take the 50k and play for me? And if you don't, then fair enough, I'm not expecting you to. But um, we did see Gorillas do this with Mental. You guys might remember Mental, Gears of War legend, one of the best players to ever do it on that side, I believe. Unfortunately, Gears of War Esports doesn't really seem to exist anymore. But um, Mental came over and played on the academy team for Los Angeles Gorillas during Cold War. And... 
Was Nero on that team as well? I kind of forget what the team was, but I think it was quite well known that Mental was not great on that academy team. It wasn't really that good at COD, and there were probably better options to bring up for their academy. But they brought Mental in, and he kind of got slammed, I mean, for a little while. But who knows, maybe it could have worked out in a different universe, and he got that spot because he was a legend of another esport. And you can understand why, rather than challenger players that have grinded for some time. So this is the, the issue if you're a challenger player, is that even if you're doing well in challenges, Still, you know, names like Biffle and also even names like Mental from other esports might take precedence in terms of what teams want to do, especially if they've got to consider like the content side and sponsorship of agreements and stuff like that. But, um, you know, signing Shifty over a Challengers player feels like a mistake just because, you know, the Challengers guys have grinded for years about this and signing someone from Warzone. But, um, you know, look, if they've got a big brand, a big presence, those are some of the things that are important to these teams on the bottom end of the league because they're probably not going to be winning championships anyway, are they? So this is where Draza then chimes in. And, um, you know, no surprises that of all the players to get involved Involved in. Draza and Scrappy were the first two on the Twitter fingers and as he says Warzone players think they can come into the CDL when they wouldn't even make it out of challenges he says so pretty funny stuff from Draza and as Rafi says like um you know you get ready to fight World War 3 the reply is unchal lad he says so yeah he's ready to go and look is this true in fairness I think a lot of the Warzone guys clearly they can shoot straight but there is no doubt a big experiential skill gap on the CDL map mode combinations that they would have to get up to speed with but um you know in fairness there's been other players that have done well before spotted in the ranks play leaderboards that actually turn out to be pretty good and can get taught some of these things over time so i think with time maybe there's a chance but um as i think it was jintwood actually the replies here says like one of the challengers guys when i sketch on them they're not going to know what to do right so you know if they come into the challengers pit they've got to find themselves in that position i don't really think any of the warzone guys would voluntarily go into challenges and try and grind through the pits if they're good enough if they've got a big enough presence to maybe get an offer straight into the cdl then sure but grinding through the challenges pit would not be easy at all and i think the draws is right that you know would those warzone guys rise to the top of challenges that's far from guaranteed because there's a lot of really good players in challenges that have done very well in the CDL in the past. Even we talked about God RX and others like this in recent memory. That, um, you know, in terms of skill, maybe they're different level. In terms of experience playing competitive modes, they're different level. And as uh, Crone says, Shifty and Biffle play retired players for a living. Simba to Bezier that wants retiring those players. Like there's levels in this game, which um, I think is probably accurate. But, you know, we're going to be biased here, right? Generally, obviously, you guys and myself are on the competitive side of the the seed and the competitive players in the CDL are going to be biased against the Warzone guys. It's the same thing, right, for the fact that Skump, when he won the World Series of Warzone solo YOLO, not knowing the meta, that is like... It's great that he won that because it means that as the competitive seed, it's always such an easy shutdown. You know, if Warzone players ever want to try and pipe up, you can always just say, well, Scott won that World Series of Warzone one time. Whether you think that's a valid argument or not, it, you know, it does hold some weight, I think. So anyway, Shifty then replies, as you might expect, and says, I don't know. A lot of pros were getting done up by Warzone kids in the COD Kings events, which is... Maybe true in the Warzone side of that event. If you guys weren't watching a couple of weeks ago, there was like a Warzone CDL crossover event where they would play some hard points where the CDL players would win. They'd play some Warzone kill races where the Warzone players would pretty much win, even though the likes of Celia were still pretty nasty. And then they'd play, at least in the final round, some search and destroy, some like shipment 1v1s, this type of stuff. And um, as Draza says, you aren't talking about a Warzone hardpoint and shipment gunfight tourney, right? Basically saying that that doesn't really count on let's play real cards nah the all s and d one not gonna lie pros had no chance of it with shipment ones which i'm not sure actually checks out because i think that the likes of you know sell and havoc and scrappy i mean that's all scrappy i know it was huskers but scrappy was just 360 this guy like you know, I'm not sure I fully buy this analysis, to be honest. And, you know, it was Illy and Co that ended up winning the entire tournament in the end of the Cod King stuff. And then, of course, because of these comments, people were trying to cloud on this shifty guy. And I get it, right? I mean, like, this is a screenshot from uh, that tournament a couple of weeks ago now, or whatever tournament was going on here, where it was Kismet, Apathy, Slacked, and Dashy. And then we had Tommy, Shifty, Envoy, and Scrap. So at this point here, Scrappy on Embassy Hardpoints, he's got 54 kills. 54, Shifty's got 19 in 34. He's not having a great time. 
and yes, this is one screenshot of one map. And obviously there's going to be an experience gap here for players that have grinded out these maps for the entire season and someone like Shifty that's not really played that much hardpoint on this level, not really played, you know, MC hardpoint and scrimmed it every single day of his entire year. But um, nonetheless, is there in addition to the experience gap also just a straight up skill gap as well? Because, I mean, yeah, Scrappy had 54 kills at this point in the game. So, um, yes, then there was some further replies actually from Scrappy himself. He says, you know, I have with the mindset, right? He likes the way that this guy thinks. But if someone like this gets a spot over a grunning challengers player, then, you know, that actually understands real cards, Twitter would go rogue. And, um, you know, says that, what do you think it's harder to do? Play against people who play the game one hour a day, which is what the Warzone guys do in his opinion, or for three days a week, or shooting against the top 1% and really it's the top 0.05% of players that are in challenges really, then um, that play 10 hours every day. So, I mean, this is a fair point and obviously Scrappy does support his guys over in challenges. And it's a fair point that if any of these guys got a CDL offer before some top challenger players, it would cause big controversy. But I can actually kind of see it from the perspective of the organizations in some sense. So Zuma decides to get it on the action as well. The best COD players in the world are in the CDL. Only a select few of the Warzone players that could make the switch. And you guys can, you know, think about who that might be. I think Biffle is like he's the one that I would look at, and then there's maybe a couple of others that could possibly make it as well if they dedicated the time. Stop with the 1v1 arguments, though they're entertaining to watch. Awareness, comms, positioning, routes, teamwork, timings, a lot that goes on to being a pro COD player. So um, even Karma kind of, uh, you know, jumped in on this. I saw this commentary on Reddit. People were saying that, well, Biffle's good, but, um, you know, there's a lot more to being a CDL pro than they can comprehend and often fans can comprehend. And Karma says, like, it gets thrown around like it's easy to make it into the league and um, but then we get Clayster right so Clay was probably the only person here with a slightly different perspective maybe because he's like look Los Angeles Grillers you want to sign me and bring Biffle in like I'm down let's let's run it and um, Clay's confident in his own ability to make the um, well to teach these guys how to play the game as um, Clay says wasn't he the one grinding CDL ranked I think that was Scumman actually that was doing that I'm not exactly sure but um, yeah Shifty says don't think it was me but debating seeing what I can do in the new COD always trying to raise the bar and Cedia would be the next test for sure he says so I mean look I agree with Scrappy this is a good mindset but um you know whether it would work out well for this guy I'm not so convinced as Clay says yeah I can't remember the Warzone player was as I say I think it was Scum and I'm not exactly sure but I mean the game is practically the same talent would translate over as it's translated for a lot of CDL pros to Warzone just would actually have to learn the ins and outs of respawn and it'd be easy people love denying talent and never really understood the elitism between games and leagues it's the same things people said about Halo pros coming over they said the same stuff about about formal shots, enable, etc. Shoot to shoot, just gotta learn. So um, I like Clay's perspective on this actually, and it's kind of the same thing that people said about the um, the ranked play grinders, right? Because you had the likes of a BZ back in World War Two who had two accounts as number one and number two on the ranked play leaderboards, and even most recently we had Joe Deceives, and you know Joe Deceives seems like a pretty good player to me. Was this last season? Now Thieves have signed him, but was it not Scrappy that was roasting Joe Deceives for just being a challenge, like being a ranked play kid, and like challengers players should get a spot instead? So it's the same type of argument that, um, oh, he's just a ranked play grinder, like he doesn't know how to play real cards. So, um, you know, now that's obviously closer. I mean, it basically is CDL modes, maps and modes compared to what the CDL guys play compared to what the Warzone guys play. But with time, the transition could be done if they're actually skilled enough. And as Clay said here on the Reddit, like, when he played against the BZ in World War II, they could just tell this guy was built different. And um, if someone else can show that same ability, then they've still got the potential to make it happen. Will they? Would they? The likely it is that we might not ever get a clear answer to this question as to whether those guys could make it work in the CDL, just because the offers won't make any sense financially to do so. I mean, those guys have made a lot of money this last weekend playing Warzone, and they've got the streamer money, and some of them actually play for organizations, whereas in the CDL, they're going to get offered by Vegas, Ravens, Gorillas, the minimum salary to grind COD all year and get roasted week in, week out when they're not winning. So yeah, this is the issue, but very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.